I started bouncing from school to school. I went from uh, Monterey, Monterey High, which is a continuation, uh, to Silmar, and I went to uh, Hoover. I went to Roosevelt. I went to Garfield. I went to Atlanta and La Puente High School. LP, and that didn't last but a couple months because I was fighting there too. It was just like wherever you went, I was fighting with somebody. The only real gang that's ever been like allowed to come in at any time they wanted was pretty much Avenues. That's probably, probably the only real allies that we had. There was other guys from Diamond Street, from Frog Town, from Temple City, Temple Street that would come down and kick it with, but it was only like one or two of them. But it was more and more Avenues. Um, it was because Avenues wanted to get Elmwood into Avenues and we weren't having it. There was a couple guys that got into it from Elmwood. They got into Avenues and um, they lived here. They grew up here. They ran around with us and they basically got punked into going into Avenues. So a couple of the, your homies switched gangs, basically. Switched gangs, how'd you, yeah. How did you feel about that back then? Uh, to me, a audio hopper is a audio hopper. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not cool with it. It's, you know, and to this day, I don't really get along with any of them. Um, to them, they feel like this is their neighborhood. It's, it's not, you know, they have to realize, you know, they, they made a conscious choice to get in a different neighborhood. Um, but that was about the only allies that we really had was the avenues. I think sometimes people feel like, well, my barrio is small. I want to be part of a bigger barrio, right? <laughs> yeah. And then all the heat we were catching, they thought for sure we weren't going to, we weren't going to, um, last on they thought we were gonna be we were gonna have to get into the neighborhood because we were going at it with some big neighborhoods and we were going at it with them hard so it was it wasn't uh it wasn't easy by any means now but, what are some of the neighborhoods that were you had conflict with the most when you're growing up around here uh north hollywood boys gill's neighborhood which you just showed up i know you guys do the podcast all the time but you just said that one of the number one neighborhoods that he had conflict with was your neighborhood, but here you guys are standing right here next to each other. Yeah, What's brother. it like, what, 25 years later? And yeah, the last time I was out here with uh, any of his homies, I was uh, down this dead end, chased out. Uh, the homies ended up taking off, and I had to run all the way back to my hood uh, a couple miles away. So, uh, yeah, this is this is different, brother. This is this is definitely historic, I'll tell you that much. And um, before you came here, the homies have been been patrolling. Yeah, I bet. I bet. <laughs> There's been a <laughs> couple patrolling. carloads coming around. Yeah. I bet. No, it's it's uh it's different, brother. But uh, I mean, it's history, and uh, we don't shy away from it, brother. But uh, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad we can we're, we're part of this, man. There's some historic shit in our in our part of the LA, at least. Now, um, what were some of the neighborhoods that were your arrivals when you was coming up, Gil? In my neighborhood, well, yeah. oh, it would have been it would have been Elmwood, it would have been Violent Boys, it would have been Radford Street, it would have been MS, it would have been Alley Locos, it would have been uh, Boys from the Hood. I mean, there was at least, I mean, between them and everybody else out here, I think we're all warring with about ten different neighborhoods at one time. It sounds like you didn't have any allies. You, you just mentioned everyone. Who were your allies? The only allies that we still to this day is Clanton. Okay. And Clanton, that's just because it's a it's a family thing. It's a like my brother-in-law, he's from Clanton. I, I've got. Cause, I mean, we've got all kind of families that are intertwined with Clanton, and we've always had beef with one another, but it's never been where we're shooting at one another. We've always probably got down with one another, and that was about it. And uh, it's probably one of the longest allies that anybody in L.A. really has had, and we still continue to this day, at least with the force. All right, thank you very much, All right, Bill. brother. All right. We're going at it with Burbank 13. Oh, Burbank 13 was a rival? Yeah. Yeah? West Side Locals, um, Tunerville, Frogtown for a minute. Uh, West Side Clanton, or Hollywood Boys, or Hollywood Locals, uh, Vineland, uh, West Side Playboys. Uh, yeah, I already mentioned them. Uh, That's pretty much everybody except for everybody around this area. Yeah. yeah, everybody, pretty much anybody that was from a different neighborhood, it was just on and cracking. You think those rivalries still exist today, or is it kind of slowed down? Uh, from my understanding, there's um, my homeboys and actually Gil's homeboys actually get along now. Uh, 
pretty much every other neighborhood is uh, Tudorville. There's a peace treaty. There's been a long standing peace treaty with them for probably about 20 years, uh, maybe 25. And uh, that's about the only one. Everybody else, they're still going at it with them, they're still fighting with them. Now, um, Plus some more new ones that they picked up. Uh, when, you, when you talk about the, the whites around here, and you mentioned Tudorville, that the most famous Tudorville in prison is a white dude. Uh, McGee. Uh, Timothy McGee. <laughs> yes, I know. Did you run past Did you cross yeah. past with him back in the day? Yeah, Seriously? we used to go out there with him. <laughs> yeah, he's a fool. <laughs> he's, he's a fool. We knew each other pretty good. Yeah, I think he's uh, actually sitting on death row right now. Yeah, from what I heard. But he, he is a fool. He, he definitely, uh, he, he left a mark. So I'm assuming a lot of these barrios have a few whites in there, like Timothy McGee who was in Tunerville. Did you guys incorporate some of the whites into Elmwood too? I think we have a couple. Um, I wouldn't know them. Because uh, you mentioned there were two blacks. There was two blacks, and I only met one of them within the last couple of years. When all the clicks started, the original men, they were all Mexicans, as far as I know. But um, I basically just knew all the Raza, the, the ones from my clique. Um, I was around when all the clicks started, and there's about five or six different clicks from my neighborhood. Now, when you was at the, on a level four prison, you, you had to cross paths with some of the rivals that were around here, where now you're standing shoulder to shoulder with them. Uh, can you, you recall the first time, like, wow, I'm standing with my enemy? <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't easy for me. I was more, uh, keep my distance. The only one that I really got close with from my rivals was actually uh, Gil's homeboy, a Spider. That's the one that broke me down. The majority of the other guys, I would talk to them, hey, give my saludos, hey, homie, mucho gusto, whatever. I'm out of here. I'm gonna go do my thing. I didn't. I didn't really like running around with my energy. To me, I wanted it to be like the halls. You know, let's get busy. But um, no, you can't do that. But that was one of the rules that you probably learned very quickly, right? Yeah, I had to learn to. I had to. I had to learn it. I had no choice. But um, it wasn't like a. It wasn't a, like a conscious choice, like I wanted to go kick it with my enemies. It was, to me, my enemies are my enemies. I want to kill them. But, but did you see other people becoming friends that were enemies? Like, you're like, wow, these guys are actually getting close. Yeah, I used yeah. to see, like, guys from Pacoima and Violin kicking it tough. Like, they were from the same neighborhood. I used to be like, damn, these, these dudes are trying to kill each other on the streets. But they're all tough in here. But I could never get like that. The only one I got like that was, like I said, was Spider. Spider wasn't like a... A knucklehead, but he was, he was solid. He was a good homie, um, but he had a weird weight about him. He was just funny as hell. Like uh, one day we were just talking, he was telling me about this uh, time that my homeboys almost caught him slipping, and that he dived under my homeboy's truck because he had a four by four. He dived under his truck and was hiding under my homeboy's truck when they were looking for him. <laughs> so I was like, "What the hell? You know, you're telling me this for?" That you're running from my homeboys, that you're doing this? But he was that type of dude. He was uh, up and up. He was straight about things. He was like, hey, nah, homie, I give you guys credit, this and that. Thanks for watching StreetTV.net. If you're not subscribed, please hit that button below and click the bell to receive alerts and notifications. Feel free to comment below so you can give us your feedback and be sure to watch the two related episodes to the right. If you want to support this platform or follow us on social media, visit the links in the description. And thanks for watching StreetTV.net.